My name is Chris and today we're taking a look at the Alara LN01A powered speaker and matching turntable set from Triangle. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! This video is sponsored by Dearborn Music. As a small business owner myself, I strive to spend my money at independent stores, especially when it comes to my record collecting. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me mention Dearborn Music in the past. They have been by far my favorite large record store for a very long time, and for good reason. I'm able to find every new release I'm looking for in stock, and there's always a massive influx of used records coming through the door every single week, seemingly by the truckload. They have every genre you could possibly want, including many of the hard-to-find releases that sell out everywhere else. If you're in Michigan, I would say that Dearborn Music is worth the drive from anywhere in the state. If you are not from Michigan, I would say that Dearborn Music is worth the drive from anywhere outside the state. But if you're simply too far to come for an in-person visit and you still want to support an independent record store, what can be done? Well, how about free shipping on every order over $50? Simply visit DearbornMusic.net and do your shopping online easy. If you don't have a local record store, as perhaps you live too far from one, or the one near you just kind of sucks, do yourself a favor and try out Dearborn Music. Whether in person or online, you'll find that working with people who know the industry inside and out will be a much bigger help in your record collecting journey than scrolling mindlessly through some boring online mega retailer that doesn't value your business in near the same way. So help keep local record stores alive and visit Dearborn Music in person or online at DearbornMusic.net. If you're looking for a relatively affordable turntable and powered speaker combo, this review is for you. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for either an affordable turntable or powered speaker by themselves, this video is also for you. While this duo has been out for a couple of years now, they are absolutely just as relevant today as they were then. I'll be taking a look at how these two items play together, but first, let's take a look at them individually. Starting with the Triangle turntable, you will probably notice that it looks remarkably familiar to you. That's because Triangle have enlisted the help of Project to build these tables for them and then finish them in custom Triangle colors. This particular model is a Project Primary E in linen gray and comes equipped with an upgraded cartridge. Otherwise, it's nothing out of the ordinary, so let's go over its features. Weighing in at almost 9 pounds, the solid wood plinth construction gives a stable base on which the table is built. It is capable of both 33 and 45 speeds that involve you in their selection by requiring a manual belt change. This is no more difficult than taking the belt and simply moving it from one pulley to the next, however, so don't let that intimidate you if you are newer to the hobby. The platter being spun by this belt drive is a solid MDF construction and its playback speed tolerances are quite capable. Making use of this straight aluminum tone arm, the upgraded cartridge from the standard primary E turntable that Triangle have added is an Ortophone OM10. This is a subtle cartridge upgrade from the 5E, but a welcome one nonetheless. All of this is housed underneath a clear dust cover and sits upon three padded feet for the greatest stability. For the Alaras, you'll find a 50 watt per channel Class D amplifier built into the speakers, which are 89 dB sensitive themselves. They measure in at roughly 6.5 inches wide by 11.5 inches tall and almost 9 inches deep. The 1-inch fabric dome tweeter is paired with a smooth, concave mid-bass driver that measures just over 5 inches to produce the speaker's 56 Hz to 22 Hz sonic bandwidth. For connections, you'll find around back a standard RCA input that doubles as a phono input when you use the necessary selector switch and hook up a turntable, of course, an optical input, a coax input, a 3.5mm auxiliary input, a subwoofer out, and of course, the feature that makes them wireless, Bluetooth 4.0 aptX. Triangle have included a generous length of speaker cable so you can place the speakers almost anywhere you would like in a small to medium sized room and a remote control to operate them. Concerning the phono stage, it is a moving magnet preamp that, to my surprise, had zero hum when connected to either of the two turntables used in this review. I have tried several entry to mid-level powered speakers and turntables with built-in phono preamps and they have always had hum. Not here. On top of that, the performance with both cartridges were strong enough that you wouldn't need to upgrade to an outboard preamp unless you were getting serious about your sound. On the front of the speaker, you'll see two smaller black dots. When these speakers are powered on, one of them is your light indicator to let you know which setting they're currently on, while the other is just a non-functioning black dot to balance out the look. When the power is off, the LED is red. When muted, it flashes red or the current selected color. For Bluetooth, it lights up blue, which is quite a reasonable choice, and for every other connection, they will turn green. The turntable has an MSRP of $600 and the speakers $650, so you can get them as a combo for about $1,248 or you can buy them individually, but more about pricing later. Moving on to how these units sound, I must say that I've done a few reviews already on turntables that include an Ortophone OM10 cartridge, so there really isn't anything new to say here on that front. 
For the money, it is a well-balanced and user-friendly cartridge. Many of you might prefer the Orderphone 2M Red or 2M Blue to this, but I find that with this entry-level table, the OM10 is a perfect fit. It's not as forward as the other two carts I mentioned, and it still contains all the detail that you might want at this level. What really surprised me though, and what will be the object on which I focused the majority of this review, were the speakers. To put it quite plainly, I was surprised at the performance of these speakers. I probably shouldn't have been, considering Triangle are known for their strong performing speakers, but I simply wasn't expecting the amount of quality and sound that I received from this small, self-powered package. I think the low frequency range of 56 Hz is quite deceiving. In the various positions in which I tried the speakers around my room, I was impressed again and again by the amount of low end they were able to produce. While they could get a bit boomy if placed too close to a wall, I found that you didn't need much space from a wall to receive solid sonic performance. These are certainly a great near-field speaker that will hold their own in a small to medium-sized room. Additionally, there are bass and treble controls included on the remote, so you can dial down the bass a tad if you find it too heavy, but like where the speakers sit in your room. Spending equal time with the turntable triangle provided, as well as my own Vintage Techniques SL D202 turntable with a Goldring E3 Phono cartridge, I chose to review this setup over the past several weeks with three records that were all from different Record Store Day releases. My thought process behind this was twofold. Firstly, I wanted to see how the system would perform with potentially lower quality pressings, as RSD records can often be. Second, with this being aimed at more of an entry level to casual listener, I think RSD releases would be something that might get regular play upon them. While the techniques with the gold ring cartridge did outperform the triangle with the OM10 in my opinion, I heard similar results sonically from both tables. Starting off with an absolute classic from Tesla, the great radio controversy, which might as well be a greatest hits album at this point, I was quite surprised at how good the imaging was with these setups. Jeff Keith's vocals were simply spot on in placement, and more importantly, they just sounded natural. The speakers allowed for ample movement in the listening area without punishing the listener by degrading the sound when outside of the listening sweet spot. This was most apparent with the vocals. The soundstage on the song No Way Out in particular was plenty wide and deep which came into play with the multiple layered guitars, both electric and acoustic, employed in this recording. This blend of playing by Frank Hannon and Tommy Skeo exceeded the boundaries of the speakers and matched perfectly with the vocals. Hairband or not, this album was expertly mixed and recorded and it showed here. A uh, welcome discovery considering my fondness for the album when I was young. The fat 80s snare drum of Troy Laqueta had loads of verb in the best possible way. It was full and rich while still employing a great deal of snap to hold down the beat. The cymbals were not just clean and crisp, but they also rang very true. I especially liked his ride cymbal on this album. It had plenty of ping and body, and it was one of the many things that made me sit up and take notice that these affordable, self-powered speakers that are also wireless, even though I was plugged in here, were performing at a much higher level than I anticipated. The bass guitar of Brian Wheat wasn't to be overlooked either. While this isn't a featured instrument here, as in the playing isn't the virtuoso stylings of Getty Lee or Steve Harris, it added the depth to the rhythm session that was necessary and showcased the low end capabilities of the speakers. Steady and driving quarter notes with tasteful licks here and there were all that were needed to hold down the floor and keep the music moving. From here I went to the recent Record Store Day release of the Mimic Motion Picture soundtrack as composed by Marco Beltrami. Of the three records used in this review, this one far and away put the Alaris through their paces and they came out none the worse for wear. The many instruments used balance very well with the choral singing. The wide soundstage of the violins and their soaring performances were clear and sweet even through the intense volume swells throughout the album. There was never a hint of distortion during these parts and everything held in place. The horns had an appropriate amount of bite and texture. They added depth and feeling to the pace and the notes chosen set the mood for the music. The percussive drums added forward momentum to the music when necessary and had good body about them. They were deep and rich while still showcasing a well-balanced tone all their own. I was again surprised by the wide stereo separation, particularly with the piano and xylophone mix that found them on opposite sides of the speakers. Instead of competing for space, they were instead paired and blended well together and complemented one another. The last record I used over the course of my reviewing was also from the last record store day. The Oscar Peterson trio Live in Zurich in 1971 titled On a Clear Day. Pairing up with bassist Niels Henning Orsted and drummer Louis Hayes, I was a bit disappointed to find that this was never before release recording, mainly because I would like to have a high quality pressing of this album, but alas. To be fair though, the RSD pressing, even on the crystal clear vinyl, which is known to cause static, performed much better than I thought it would. 
Oscar's playing on this album found him as sharp and brilliant as ever he's been. Pianos are said to be an incredibly hard instrument to capture on recordings, but I think the quite affordable Alaris performed admirably here with both turntables and cartridges in use. On some songs the piano was bright and plucky, while on others it was delicate and precise. The moments of powerful playing never distorted and were never oversaturated either. It was to me as a piano should be, at least on smaller speakers. The acoustic double bass of Niels Henning Orsted was also on display. The depth of the Alaris certainly went a long way to add body to the mix in this recording. The delicacy of the acoustic bass's nature was also quite present though. Slight fret noise and string slap could be heard throughout this recording and added a great layer of texture for me. Coupled with the accurate soundstage here, I found the entire performance to be a well-balanced and very engaging performance indeed. Louis Hayes' drumming was subtle when it needed to be, powerful when it needed to be, and always the backbone of the music played throughout. On the whole, I feel like I actually spent less time reviewing this particular album and just instead listening to it. I wouldn't say that's a frequent occurrence when I'm reviewing a product, and it goes to show the ease and balanced nature of the setup, and particularly of the Alara speaker. You can easily find yourself just listening to and enjoying the music, and in the end, I'd say that's the goal we're all after anyway. At the request of a viewer, I then hooked up the IOTA VX MP3 network streaming CD player to the optical port to see how that would perform. Loading a few CDs and giving a thorough listen, I heard pretty much what I've described until now only in CD format. There were of course no pops or clicks, and the sound was crystal clear. The only drawback I found was that I needed to use the remote of the Alaris controls instead of the remote control that is included with the Audio VX. Not a deal breaker by any means, but still noteworthy. So with all that said, what were the things that I didn't care for about this turntable and speaker combination? Well, before we get to that, let me take a quick minute to talk about some of the smaller things that I did like about them. Firstly, they included a printed manual. That might not be a big deal for most of you, but I'm still a fan of the tactile nature of these. Hence, part of the reason why I enjoy vinyl records in the first place. You can quickly look to the section you need, and the information is right at your fingertips. I'm just a fan of this. Inside the box, they also included optional feet for the speakers and even batteries for the remote. You may be surprised how often subtle things like this are overlooked. It was even packed well, something else we often overlook. There's even a warranty on the speakers as well. Three years on the active parts, i.e. the amplification, and five years on the passive parts, such as the drivers themselves. Just make sure you register your product online to make use of this warranty. But moving to the caveats, it must be said that the included remote control is entirely too small for my liking. Going from the overly large remote included with the Rotel RA6000 to this overly small remote for the Alaras, I wonder why there just isn't a happy medium. The buttons are easy to read and everything functions as it should, but it was fiddly in my hands and prone to dropping here and there. Additionally, if you lose the remote control, which is a real possibility considering its size, you lose the functionality of the speakers entirely. There are no analog buttons on the front of these speakers to control them. A missed opportunity in my opinion. Next up is the infernal and consistent problem that stems from having a project turntable in the mix, the power cord. As always, it is just too short. I know I say this every time I review a project turntable, but unfortunately you're going to keep hearing it until they finally take notice and increase the length of the damn power cord. This short cord severely limits where you can place your turntable, which of course is paramount to your entire setup. Speaking of which, the included RCA cables for the turntable are a bit short themselves, although not nearly as limiting or irritating as the power cord problem. While there was ample speaker cable length to separate the speakers from one another, you are limited to how far you can move the turntable from the main speaker, which houses all the connections, by the length of the RCA cord. Something you may want to keep in mind. Otherwise, it would just be nitpicky stuff such as no included RCA or Toslink cable to connect to your other components. Lastly, it would be the price. At $600, quite frankly, the Triangle Turntable is a hard pass. You can pick up a Project Debut Carbon Evo for that price and receive a far better product. However, all is not lost. While doing some digging, I was able to find the Turntable on sale for a much more reasonable $400. At this price, I would say that is certainly a good deal and well worth your consideration. Its solid construction, capable cartridge, and steady performance are everything you might need for a moderate budget setup. The same can't be said for the speakers, however. I was able to find them as low as $400, all the way up to their list price of $650. While you might not get the exact color you want at $400, at that price they are an absolute steal. Even at the $650 mark, I can still highly recommend these speakers if you're looking for an outstanding near-field listening from a moderately small package that has multiple connections. They simply outperform their price point and look good doing it. I would be more than happy to have these in my office or kitchen as a secondary setup, considering I already have a main system, and I think you would be too. 
Thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.